So remember how in the old days we used to learn about numbers. We have number one, we have number two, for example, we learned about zero. And later on, we also learned that there are also a negative number. We have number um, like negative one. And we also have a fraction, like five half, and we also have like irrational numbers like pi. And wonderful thing happens when we put all these numbers into a big picture. We see that all these numbers actually lies on a number line. We, we learn that this number form what is called a number system. And that's how we have the system of real numbers. We have a system of complex numbers and so on. So, we want to do the same thing with vectors. So we basically have like, like, like a bunch of vectors, right? So vector is fun and all, but it would be nice if we actually put all these vectors together into a system. That kind of system, that's gonna be called a vector space. Which is gonna be the topic for the lecture today here. A vector space. It's basically just a set of vectors. But actually, um, because I want the definition to be broad, so the vector space can be actually also a set of anything. It, it doesn't have to be just a vector. We will see an um, example in a moment. <clears throat> and what we need is that we want to be able to add two vectors together. We want vector addition and we also want the scalar multiplication. We want to be able to multiply a vector by a scalar, by a number in R. <coughs> so we are going to call any set that has these 12 properties a vector space. So let me actually kind of mention this now. The first four is going to be the most important one, but, but let me talk about that one by one here. So the first thing that I want to happen in a vector space is that I want the addition of two vectors to be a vector. So basically, I want my vector space to be kind of like its own universe. When you add one thing with another, I want it also to be a vector. So, so when you add vector by a vector, it, it should not actually kind of fall outside the universe. <clears throat> I also want zero to be in my vector. I want the um, scalar multiplication of a vector to be a vector. So if I multiply a vector by a number, by a scalar, it should also remain inside my universe. So I don't want my vector, when it multiply to with a big number, then it fall kind of outside. So I don't want that, I don't want that to happen. In particular, if my a here is a um, negative one, so which that means a um, negative one times v is a negative v, I want that to be also um, a vector. Let me actually mention the name real quick. This is called um, close under addition. And this one is close under um, scalar multiplication. Okay. So what about the rest? These are the usual um, vector properties. If I want to add two vectors um, u and v, I want that to be the same as um, adding the vector v and u. So I want my u plus v to be the same as v plus u. The name for this one is that uh, my, my addition should be commutative. So I can swap the order of the um, addition and that should work fine. The next one I want, if I want to add u and v and w, it should not matter the order in which I do it. If I add u and v first, and then add that, um, add w to that, or if I add um, v and w first, and then add u to that, the final product should be the same thing. This is called the um, associative. The next one, if I want, if I add zero to any vector, then it should be the same thing. If I went, I mean, if I add the negative of any vector by itself, then that should give me a zero vector. The next four, <clears throat> if I multiply a constant a to the sum u and v, then I should be able to distribute this constant a, so a times u plus v is the same as a u plus a v. So this is the usual, um, distributive property that you have for real numbers and for vectors. 
And the same thing when you have two constant. If you add um if you add a and b and multiply by v, that should be the same as a v plus b v. And also for um multiplication, if I multiply a to b v, it's the same as you multiply a and b as a real number first, and then I multiply that to the matrix. I mean to the vector v. <coughs> and the last one, if you multiply one to any vector, then you get the same vector. Okay. So these are the 12 properties that, that, that a vector space need to have. And like I said before, we will see later in the example that, that the first four is going to be the more important one. One thing that I would also like to point out is that for something to be a vector space, I only need vector addition. So I need to be able to add two vectors. And I need scalar multiplication. So I need to be able to multiply a vector with a scalar, notice that I actually don't really need a vector of multiplication. Multiplication. In the real vector sense, we will actually have, we will actually be able to find the dot product of um, two vector u dot v, and we also have the cross product um, v cross u. So these are nice at all, but I don't require that for the vector. I don't require that a vector space has a vector multiplication. So these things are nice to have, but they are not necessary. So let's just look at the um, examples here. 